In Jordan Peterson's newest book, Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life, which the author says is mostly about the Holocaust, the word Holocaust is absent, as is any discussion about that event. However, Peterson mentions Mercury, as in the god, planet, or metal, 12 times. He does so mostly to venerate Aleister Crowley and the occult, strands of which influenced the Nazis. If you'd like to know more about how the National Socialists evolved from occultic societies, and how they utilized occultic ideas to influence the public and demonize non-Aryans, I would suggest reading Hitler's Monsters, A Supernatural History of the Third Reich by Eric Kurlander, a professor of history who earned his PhD at Harvard. In this installment of Beyond Order, Jordan Peterson, Cryptofascism, and the Occult, you're going to see how Peterson's references to mercury and alchemy have been lifted from Aleister Crowley. I'll use this subject as a springboard to various other topics, so you can gain a better understanding of how Jordan Peterson fuses cryptofascism with occultism. If you watched parts 3 and 4, you should recall that this is the image for Rule 2, which Peterson calls Materia Prima, and which he admits he got from the occult. Above the androgynous figure of Rebus, we see a symbol within a star. As Peterson explains, the ancient symbol for Mercury is located at the very pinnacle. Here's a larger version of the ancient symbol for Mercury within a pyramid. By ancient, Peterson means alchemical. You see, Peterson bypasses chemistry and heads straight for the domain of alchemy, because he's old-fashioned, a real traditionalist. He admitted as much when asked by the CBC's Wendy Mesley if he could explain his sudden popularity, saying, The sorts of things I've been talking to people about are old things, and they're the things that people always need to know. Indeed, and one of the old things that Peterson's followers need to know about is alchemy. What they don't need to know about are the natural or social sciences, hence why he counsels parents to haul their children out of school and dissuade them from attending university. They'll never learn how to turn base metals into noble metals while consulting the Zodiac from closet Stalinists or social justice warriors. Plus, people with educations are probably less likely to join Peterson's cult. I wish I were kidding. During the Q&A portion of a talk in Ottawa in 2017, Peterson said, Every time the schools do something with your kids that you don't agree with, keep them at home. Simple as that. And do it now. Because the systems that produce teachers have become pathological completely. They're indoctrination camps and nothing else. The audience applauded. Peterson explained how proper education should be predicated not on communist indoctrination, but old things. In my classes, and I tell my students this right at the beginning, I'm trying to get them to understand why they are Nazis. Peterson began his Ottawa talk by saying that when he was 13, he wrote a paper about Auschwitz because I was trying to understand how human beings could do that, knowing full well that I was one of them. I ask you, what 13-year-old knows they could have brutalized and murdered Jews in a Nazi concentration camp? And what type of audience member would listen to him say this and then ask for his views on education. When a man in the audience asked for his opinion of the alt-right, he said it was incomplete. He added that at the core of alt-right thinking was a call to reconstitute the father and that this was benevolent. That's crypto-fascism. Peterson often urges his acolytes to reconstitute or rescue the father. And who's the father? Adolf Hitler. While trying to get his students at the University of Toronto to understand why they are Nazis, Peterson has referred to Hitler as God the Father, the Wise Father, the Great Father, the All-Seeing Great Father, and the Jovial Father of the Race. When Peterson talks about God the Father or the Great Father without mentioning Hitler, he's referring to Hitler. As I document in The Devil and His Due, for just about every statement that Peterson routinely and emphatically makes, we can find its twin embedded in a discussion about Hitler. When he talks about reconstituting or rescuing the father, or Horus rejuvenating the state, these are crypto-fascist and occultic allusions to creating a Fourth Reich or new eon. Sound crazy? I would agree. He should be institutionalized. Vox Day thinks so too. In his book, Jordanetics, he argues correctly that many of Peterson's ideas have been taken from the occult, specifically Aleister Crowley's Thelema. 
When Peterson specified that Mercury was located at the very pinnacle of this occultic image, he was likely signaling to those in the know that he's a Thelemite, or adherent of Aleister Crowley. As you should now know, Crowley learned and taught necromancy in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. This is a photo of Crowley conducting a class. And this is the Golden Dawn logo. It's called the Rose Cross of the Golden Dawn. And what do we see at its very pinnacle? The alchemical symbol for Mercury. In this image, you can see the occultic symbol Peterson chose for Beyond Order, and the one from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. The ancient symbol for Mercury is located at the very pinnacle. Peterson has alluded to the Rose Cross of the Golden Dawn on several occasions. Do you remember when he quoted this bit of poetry from T.S. Eliot, which resembled verse from Aleister Crowley? Peterson, quoting T.S. Eliot, Into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one. Crowley, cross upon cross of elemental fire, life circles life, the rose, all flowers above. Also, if we look again at the top of the Golden Dawn emblem, we can see three alchemical symbols. From left to right, sulfur, mercury, and salt. In alchemy, sulfur, mercury, and salt fall under the heading of the three principles. Peterson has been imitating Crowley's alchemical and three principles speech for years. Here are some examples from Maps of Meaning. Crowley, the three active principles, sulfur, mercury, and salt. Peterson, for one alchemist, it was salt, sulfur, vinegar. Crowley, the alchemist said three similar principles of energy, sulfur, mercury, and salt. Peterson, the evil principle which, like the alchemical sulfur, is closely connected with the devil. Crowley, sulfur is the male, fiery energy of the universe. Peterson, the sulfuric aspect of the sun's substance is attributed demonic characteristics. So here we see Jordan Peterson mimicking Aleister Crowley, who believed he could converse with and was possessed by the devil, while making references to demonic characteristics and the devil. In the following quotes, Peterson and Crowley both make covert references to the devil. See if you can spot them. Here's a tip. Think of the hermetic mantra, as above, so below. Crowley, in the beginning was the word, the logos, who is Mercury, and who is therefore to be identified with Christ. Peterson, the spirit of Christ, the world engendering Logos. The Logos is the word of God. That word transformed chaos into order at the beginning of time. In the Crowley quote, observe how he corrupts the Bible with the alchemical or occultic mention of Mercury, equating Mercury with Christ. Furthermore, he makes the sacred profane by performing what is known as an occultic reversal, or what he described as the deliberate desecration and reversal of sacred values. Thelema's mantra was an occultic reversal. Crowley replaced thou shalt not with do what thou wilt. In 12 Rules for Life, Peterson claims that Jesus Christ's Sermon on the Mount distills the 10 thou shalt nots into a single prescriptive thou shalt. Now compare Crowley's mantra with a quote from Maps of Meaning. Crowley do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Peterson, quoting the Bible, Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Well over 100 of Peterson's biblical quotes come from biblical quotes made by Crowley or Hitler. And as Peterson told his students at Harvard, while air drawing a pyramid, since meaning is context-dependent, you can pull things out of context and reverse their meaning. He was giving instructions on how to corrupt language to achieve malevolent ends. But of course, his students would not have understood that, because what Ivy League undergrad goes to psychology class thinking, what occultic messages will I be receiving today? If students understand what Peterson is driving at, and are on side with it, Peterson would think that was great. But I think chances are good that this has never happened. If students understand and are upset, he could just deny it especially since the accusation would sound far-fetched, if not unglued. Imagine the response from the registrar's office. You want to drop the class because you think the professor is a neo-Nazi and occultist? How about I book you an appointment with one of our counselors? If students have no idea what Peterson is really talking about, which I think is almost always the case, Peterson wins again because he's not taught them anything useful, and he's fooled them. They just weren't bright enough to decipher his code. 
As I have said before, this is the behavior of a narcissist and psychopath. Peterson is a trickster figure who's playing a joke on just about everybody, just about all of the time. But back to the Crowley quote. Crowley's Christ is the Antichrist. And since he repeatedly equates Christ to Mercury, then we can infer that Mercury is also demonic. Indeed, in Thelema, Mercury is the winged messenger, which is possibly an allusion to Satan. And in Crowley's Book of Lies, he says, This hawk is not solar, but mercurial. The hawk is Horus. Therefore, if Crowley's Christ is the Antichrist, and Mercury is probably satanic, and Horus is mercurial, then Horus must symbolize who? Who would be the godhead of Aleister Crowley's religion? In Crowley's day, you couldn't come out and say it. Also, Crowley was sometimes monitored by the police. Consequently, he would need to conceal Horus's identity. He would have to employ methods that were occultic and communicate in what he called a magical cipher. Let's revisit the Peterson quotes. The Spirit of Christ, the world engendering Logos, the Logos is the Word of God, that word transformed chaos into order at the beginning of time. There are several reasons why we can deduce that Peterson's Christ is also the Antichrist and that his God is not Jehovah. First, he's plagiarizing Aleister Crowley. Bit of a giveaway. Second, he has repeatedly indicated that God the Father is Adolf Hitler. Third, he's not really a Christian. Before he rebranded himself as a self-help guru, he used to identify as an expert on evil and say things like, religion is for the weak, ignorant, and superstitious. And this is why he does his biblical lecture series. He can rave about Milton's Paradise Lost, relay the description of hell from James Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man, without mentioning that Joyce was influenced by the occult, quote passages from Jung's Red Book about the devil, while omitting that the Red Book is occultic, or that the passages are about the devil, and talk about Nietzsche's Superman and how intelligent Hitler was, and his fans are so thick they don't even notice that whatever positive messages that exist in Christianity are missing. Thus, Peterson dupes the weak, ignorant, and superstitious while charging them for the privilege. Fourth, we can surmise that Peterson's Christ is not Jesus Christ because he employs the phrase, the Spirit of Christ. When Peterson talks about Lucifer, he tends to use the word spirit. And when he uses the word spirit without mentioning Lucifer, he often does so in utterances about demons or ghosts that take possession of people, or in statements that practically mirror texts from Hitler or Jung. Here are some examples of him using spirit while speaking of the devil. Peterson, Satan, the spirit of evil itself. Peterson, the Mephistophelian spirit. Peterson, the adversarial spirit, that is Mephistopheles. Peterson, citing Goethe's Mephistopheles. I am the spirit who negates, and rightly so, for all that comes to be deserves to perish wretchedly. Peterson, Lucifer, in Milton's eyes, the spirit of reason, was the most wondrous angel brought from the void of God. Peterson, the devil is aerial spirit and ungodly intellect. So, to recap, Satan has ungodly intellect and is wondrous, the spirit of reason, and the spirit who negates, and rightly so. And who else referred to Satan as a spirit? Aleister Crowley, who said, It is the critical spirit which is the devil. Crowley could have been alluding to a critical or admonishing voice he heard in his mind. He spoke of performing magical ceremonies in the hope of silencing the voice of the demons. Far from being possessed by the devil, he was almost certainly possessed by schizophrenia. After being banned from giving talks at Cambridge due to his non-Christian subject matter, along with rumors about having sex with boys, Crowley wrote an indignant letter to Trinity College to explain how he had traveled the world in search of the truth, which he discovered through conversation with his holy guardian angel, or who Peterson calls the most wondrous angel brought from the void of God. Crowley was banned from Cambridge grounds in 1909. In 2019, Cambridge rescinded its offer of a visiting fellowship to Jordan Peterson. Peterson told Joe Rogan that he had only wanted to go to Cambridge to learn more about Christianity, but that the Institute had treated him as though he were, and I quote, the devil himself. He was likely just feigning indignance. He revels in the notoriety. When a bookstore in New Zealand pulled his 12 Rules for Life, 
he pointed out how they continued to sell Mein Kampf, that his book was censored, while a book which made possible the Holocaust, and which he has plagiarized, was not, must have given him a buzz. But circling back to the subject of hearing voices, according to Professor Robert Sapolsky of Stanford University, when schizophrenics in the West hear critical voices, the voice that's most common is that of Christ. The voice that's second most common is that of the Antichrist. Sapolsky also says that schizophrenia usually strikes in the late teens and early 20s. And in Maps of Meaning, a book overflowing with Crowley plagiarism, Peterson writes, In my early 20s, I started to hear a voice inside my head commenting on my opinions. Every time I said something, it said something, something critical. You don't believe that. That isn't true. You don't believe that. That isn't true. The voice applied such comments to almost every phrase I spoke. I couldn't understand what to make of this. I knew the source of the commentary was part of me, but which part precisely was me? The talking part or the criticizing part? If it was the talking part, then what was the criticizing part? If it was the criticizing part, how could virtually everything I said be untrue? I tried only to say things that my internal reviewer would pass unchallenged. I soon noticed that I felt much less agitated when I only said things that the voice did not object to. My experiment had been a success. I was the criticizing part. Nonetheless, it took me a long time to reconcile myself to the idea that almost all my thoughts weren't real, weren't true, or at least weren't mine. His thoughts weren't his because they were being supplied by the voice, which he said had eyes. The voice with the eyes forced Peterson to tell the truth which he's been doing up until the present, by constantly lying. But his thoughts don't just come from the voice. They also come from the people he plagiarizes, such as Adolf Hitler and Aleister Crowley, as we can see when he writes about Mercury in Beyond Order, ostensibly about the mass murder of the Jews. Crowley, in fact, we judge temperature by the difference of the coefficients of expansion due to the heat of two substances, glass and mercury. Again, the divisions of the scale of the thermometer depend upon the temperature of boiling water, which is not a fixed thing. Peterson, gold dissolves in mercury, and mercury can therefore be used to draw out the small amounts of the precious metal typically found in ores. The metal is then boiled off. It has a low boiling point, so that only gold remains. Crowley, messenger of the gods, mercury. Peterson, mercury, messenger of the gods. Crowley, mercury. God of thought. Peterson, the winged god Mercury. Crowley, you are mercurial spirits, the spirit of Mercury. Peterson, the god Mercury represented what inspires or attracts interest voluntarily. He was the spirit who possessed a person. Crowley, note that Bet, the letter of Mercury, means a house. Peterson, the ancient symbol for Mercury is located at the very pinnacle. Crowley, 64 is the number of Mercury, and of the intelligence of that planet. Peterson, the symbol for Mercury, God, planet, metal. Crowley, he had prepared fixed Mercury, that is to say, the pure metal in some form that was solid at ordinary temperatures. Peterson, the proclivity of Mercury for gold has given rise to the idea that the liquid metal has an affinity for what is most precious. Crowley, the red tincture of the alchemist, of the nature of gold. The great task of the alchemist has been accomplished. The mercury is fixed. Peterson, mercury will enable the seeker to collect what is, like gold, of the highest value. For the alchemists who created the drawings like the one we are analyzing, that highest value came to the ultimate development. So, I ask you, with your new knowledge of alchemy and mercury, Do you feel sufficiently up to speed on understanding the motivations that led to the extermination of two-thirds of Europe's Jews? You can better understand how Beyond Order really is about the Holocaust by examining the picture for Rule 3 of St. George Slaying the Dragon. This picture of St. George Slaying the Dragon was official Nazi art. That's it for Part 5. Talk to you again in Part 6. Thank you, and bye for now.